right, happy Friday, everyone. Um, we're going to take a look uh, at the overview of uh, Unit 9 here. Um, we are done with these first two units, uh, entropy. You got a real good understanding of that now. Free energy. So you've got S and G are done, um, and you've tied them together. And now we're going to relate it to an entire other unit that we did, which was a very important um, and detailed unit on equilibrium. So that's what that EQ stands for. And you notice we're even sneaking in uh, one uh, chapter from that uh, unit. Uh, you can see if when we went back to unit 7, um, when we did our very last one, we said that 7.14, which is an equilibrium concept, is going to be covered in topic 9. Point five, and that's where we are um, right now. Okay, so um, let's go back uh, to Unit 9 here and 9.5 and actually uh, something that deals with uh, equilibrium as well. So uh, let's see what this has to offer and how we're going to relate this concept to equilibrium. Okay. Uh, sounds like I'm competing with my wife in the next room, so I'm going to take uh, a little break here. So let's get this to maximum size here. Uh, so free energy and equilibrium, and then we're going to get into something called dissolution. Uh, you can see the word solution in there, probably going to have something to do with that. Um, and uh, we're going to be relating delta G uh, in, at standard conditions to equilibrium. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, first of all, uh, two very important summaries of what we talked about with free energy. Um, that being delta G must be less than zero for a reaction to proceed in a given reaction direction. Okay, so circle or highlight that. That's a good summary statement. Delta G is the maximum amount of work that can be done on a system. Circle that. That's more the physics definition about this. Now, if you think about this, um, a equilibrium can be related to delta G um, by the fact that the system is at equilibrium when it no longer is able to do any work. Now, what that means is, you know, when you're shifting back and forth at equal rates, nothing is technically getting done in terms of work and how we defined work. So when delta G equals zero, that is going to be related to equilibrium. Um, the forward and reverse reactions continue, uh, and they continue to go. Uh, I'm going to have to record this some other time, because my wife's in a meeting right behind me. Okay, so how do these things relate? Well, this is a really good graphic. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sure, quite confusing when you, when you look at it the first time. But uh, what it is is uh, an example, uh, energy diagram of a in equilibrium with B. So you're going back and forth at a continual rate. And right here, this is the free energy of A right there. And then over here is the free energy of B. Here you're at pure B, all B. Here you're at pure A. So get your bearings on that. And so let's say you start off with A. Well, uh, at this point, it's definitely thermodynamically favored, which means delta G is negative. You're going downhill on this energy diagram. Um, so, uh, and, and remember, uh, also the, uh, the axis here is important to note uh, that this is G in combined species, okay? Um, so as we're going downhill, 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 uh, remember favoring that low energy. So we're, and that's why it wants to get there to the lowest energy 
this is Monday, Tuesday, and we're at Friday right here. Um, but what happens, I want you to, um, and this is another thing we're going to add to this lecture, I want you to add like a little a ball of some kind. It can be a bowling ball or a soccer ball, but some kind of ball here um, with an arrow. Because if you think of a ball rolling on top of this, you will get the idea that it's going to go like this, and it's going to go back up like that, and it's going to continue and continue and continue, but it will balance out so that eventually you will reach this equilibrium between the two systems, okay? And that equilibrium is at the bottom of that point when it's just back and forth rate. So at this point, with your ball, to use the physics analogy, we have to think there is no friction. So there's nothing to slow it down. So you're just going back and forth. Uh, and, you know, it definitely gets a some momentum coming down here because it's thermodynamically favored. And if you wanted to go back to A, that is a non-thermodynamically favored process. So you have to climb the hill. All right. Um, now, the difference between these two, uh, the delta G of B minus A, um, uh, so the products minus the reactants, that's how you figure out the delta G for the reaction. Okay? So um, it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and that's a, that's a, a good example. Okay? So... Um, uh, the other thing to add to this is delta G uh, is going to be negative coming down and positive going up in, in that direction as well, of course. So then you'll reach and you'll achieve that balance. Um, so when delta G is less than zero, the process favors products at equilibrium. Okay? And that would mean KEQ is going to be greater than 1 because you have products over reactants. going to be lots of products. Um, and uh, the reaction is considered to be exergonic. Exergonic. When delta G is less than 0 and it's negative. So that's the word of the day. Of course you're going to circle that word right there. Okay? And then you're also going to circle that or highlight that. Uh, as well. Okay? Okay, so that uh, sort of explains uh, the system uh, exergonic uh, delta G less than zero. Oh, my daughter just brought me a nice refreshing glass of water. Okay, so um, it is possible. So think of this as being two new things. So you sort of got the setup from, from before. Um, your pure C over there and your pure D over here. Well, this one, it tends to favor the reactants a little more. Because you can see where the ball ends up settling. And equilibrium is way over on the reactant side. So yeah, the ball's going to do this. And it'll go up, but then it's going to come back down. And it's going to settle in this area, going back and forth and back and forth, um, where uh, delta G is greater than zero because it goes uphill uh, with this uh, equation. Okay? So uh, this graph shows you that you're dealing uh, with a larger amount of reactants. And that, of course, would be delta G being greater than zero and a small equilibrium constant, meaning less than 1. All right? So circle that, circle that, highlight them. Um, and uh, it is not thermodynamically favored. Uh, it will produce products if the system initially contains only reactants. So uh, that can move backwards and forwards as well. And if the products are removed, the equilibrium will shift toward the product side, and that's just a review of Le Chatelier's principle. So if you take away something on the right, it'll fill that empty 
space. So um, uh, this is uh, the, the same graph. This was our AB graph. And the big conclusion right here, uh, it's already highlighted for you. So you got to just make sure it's clear on, on your notes. But this is important. Delta G equals zero. Okay? Because it's all balancing out. And um, so that, that's an important conclusion with all this. This is a lot of words for a very uh, simple idea, which is what does this zero stand for? So let's just tell it what, it, what this means. That means one atmosphere, one molar concentration, and 298K. So circle all three of those things. That's what the zero means. Now you can look at it at a different temperature. And all you need to do, if it is the non-standard temperature here, you can put a subscripted T. Um, so uh, you can move the maximum amount of work that can be done by changing uh, the, the temperature. Okay? Um, so that's a lot of words for pretty simple idea. Now, we got ourselves a new equation here. Delta G equals negative R T L N K E Q. All right, so the natural log of the equilibrium, and then you just take the gas constant times the temperature, and you got your delta G. Um, the math gets a little tricky because uh, a lot of times you're going to be solving for the KEQ, in which case you'll have to write the equation, rewrite it this way. Um, so you go E superscripted to the delta G minus RT, and then that negative sign you just put right out in front there. Okay, so that's just rearranging this right here, the, the, the delta G and the RT, and then to get rid of the natural log, you take the E of both sides, and then you got just the KEQ, and E to this fraction. Now, this is going to be a little bit upsetting uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, up to this point, delta G uh, has been in kilojoules. But when you use this equation, it has to be in joules because of the what? The gas constant? 8.314? Am I a liar? Did I lie to you when I said 0, 0.0? Let's see, what did the purple sheet have? 8206. It's right on the purple sheet that the gas constant is less than 1. Uh, 0 0.08206. Uh -huh. But that's atmospheres. Uh, liters, moles, Kelvin. This is joules per mole Kelvin. So that's why delta G has to be in joules because of this. And then the temperature, of course, has to be in Kelvin. Um, the KEQ must be calculated using partial pressure for gases and molar concentrations for aqueous species. That's nothing new, okay? So that's like KP, KC, those are two kinds of KEQ. So um, both of this, this equation right here, um, this equation is, is listed on there, delta G equals negative RT ln KEQ, all right? Um, and... Uh, Wow, that's a long meeting she's having over there. I thought it would. It's been like a three-hour meeting. So, um, and it's getting late. So I'm just going to fight through this. I hope you can understand everything. Okay, so we're about done with this lecture anyway. So um, the uh, uh, you're relating it right there. This is the one that's on the purple sheet. And then you have to know how to derive this second equation right there.